Hi, my name is Justin Shelf, and I'm the founder here at Patch My PC. In this video, we're going to review some of the new features that we've implemented in the last two months within our publishing service. A little background on what we're looking at here. This is our public roadmap available at patchmypc.com forward slash roadmap. Now, if you're not familiar with how we add items to our roadmap, it's all based on customer feedback that we get at ideas.patchmypc.com, and that's what we use for our user voice. So if you ever have new product or feature requests, you can go and request that on our ideas portal, and that will eventually uh, make it to our roadmap, and you can track the progress as we're developing these new features and products within our catalog. So uh, with that said, let's go ahead and jump right in and show you a quick overview of what we've shipped in the last two months based on your feedback. So jumping into our publishing tool, not a whole lot has changed in the general tab. One new feature that we added is the ability to increase or decrease the max log size for the patchmypc.log. So quite helpful if you're troubleshooting or want to include debug logging where you can retain a bit more information. Under the updates tab, if you open your database scan, there's a few improvements here. If I go ahead and click query, the first one is that you can exclude products that are already enabled. So I can just uncheck that. And then that would filter to only see products that are not enabled that are currently detected as installed within your SCCM environment based on hardware inventory. Now, one of the things that we improved on the back end is we improved the uh, detection of 32 versus 64 bit applications. So before we would use a table that included both 32 and 64 bit applications in the same view. So we used the V add and remove program. Now what we do is if we know it's a 32 or 64 bit specific product, we look at the view that only shows 32 and 64 bit. So instead of getting uh, duplicate data for 32 versus 64, where it could potentially show the same numbers, it's much more accurate for the vast majority of products where it will show only 32 and only 64 bit like we can see here with Google Chrome. Okay, so that's it for the scan. Now within the updates and applications, we made a few improvements for products here. So for example, say you went and enabled Google Chrome and you wanted to customize the pre and post script. And what we improved here is the additional folders browse dialog box. So the way it worked before, if I look at this screenshot, we can see that we were just using the uh, folder browse dialog of .NET. And that wasn't great because it didn't allow you to uh, put in a custom path or browse like a UNC path. So we made our own class here to make this uh, better. So here we can see that if we browse out, we can now go directly to UNC pass and we include, can include folders directly from custom pass here uh, that we couldn't do before. So we'll do okay on that. Let me just uncheck that option. Another thing that we did is we made some improvements on the way that language specific products appear. So previously we only supported Firefox ENUS, but we didn't actually differentiate that in the products list. Now we do, and we also added support for a few other languages for Mozilla Firefox as well. Uh, jumping over to the applications tab, if I click on the options menu uh, and you go to configure your SMS provider, you're now able to run a test connection even if you don't have a connection account. So we can test uh, connecting under the system context uh, through our UI without having to uh, put in a connection account. So this will help to test to make sure if your uh, computer is remote from your site server, that computer has the right permissions to connect to the SECM site before trying to make applications. Before you could only run a test connection if you used a connection account, but now you can simulate that under system context. Okay, uh, one quick thing to note is that uh, we've, we've had the ability to move all our applications globally to a custom folder within the applications node of the console for quite some time now. Um, so for example, if we look at that global setting, we can see that we can see all the folders directly within our console. Um, but one of the things that we're improving now, if I go look at a specific application, let's go look at Chrome, is you can now do a custom folder at the product level. So for example, if you wanted to move a, a product specific application to a separate folder, you now have the ability to do that directly within uh, the product itself. So if it's not defined at the product, it will still go to that global setting. But if you did want to define at the product level, let's go do it for 7-zip for example. And let's say we want 7-zip applications to go into this custom subfolder. Uh, you can now define that at the product level within the applications. Another new right click option that we can do at the application level is uh, we can now set a few different metadata properties for the application itself. 
So for example, if you didn't want to use our default application name and you wanted to set something specific so that it doesn't change whenever a product is updated, you could set a custom app name that would show in your console. You can set a custom localized application name that would show in Software Center, a description that would show in Software Center. And if you wanted a custom icon, you can also define that. So by default, we use the icons from the vendor, but we had some customers that wanted to include some custom icons for different products. You can now do all four of those options uh, to make sure that the applications create and update exactly how you want. All right over in the sync schedule, you can now trigger a software update point sync even if your uh, publishing service is not on your site server. So uh, in previous builds, you would only get this trigger option for your software update point sync when the publishing tool was also co-located with your site server. But now in the case, if your software update point is remote, you can now uh, configure your provider and we can trigger a software update sync uh, directly through that method, even if your uh, software update point is remote. So you now have this option regardless of where the publishing service is installed. All right, so jumping over to the alerts tab, uh, one of the coolest new features that we've added is the ability to uh, send publishing alerts using Microsoft Teams. So you can configure a webhook here and let me go ahead and run a synchronization just to show you what that looks like. So back over here, what we should see is that when these products start to publish, um, we should get notified via the webhook whenever that publishing occurs. So here we go, we can see we just got a new publishing alert. Uh, we can see that we had a new application that was created for Chrome. We also had an app for 7-Zip. You get all the release notes, so you can go directly out to that release of Chrome. You also get the classification and severity level, as well as CVIDs that are also clickable uh, directly in your team's notification. So this is very helpful to see what new applications or updates are publishing into your environment real time. Now, if we go ahead and refresh our application view, we should now see that we have our apps that were created at the Patch My PC level, but we can also see we have 7-Zip within that specific folder because we defined that custom option to move it to a specific folder at the product level. Okay, so jumping over to the advanced tab, we did quite a few new features here to help with some of the more advanced configurations. Um, so one of the new features that we can now do is trigger a software update point directly from the advanced menu. So um, within here, you have two different options. You can do a Delta sync, or you can do a full synchronization of your software update point. The full sync can be helpful in a few scenarios where maybe the decline status or the metadata has changed and you need to trigger a full sync from your software update point uh, to pull down the latest information from WSUS, uh, not just the Delta. So this can be quite helpful in a few advanced scenarios uh, that we have. Another really helpful feature is the ability to set a custom content folder. So the content folder is gonna be where temporary, temporary files are downloaded for software update and application content. So like the installation files uh, for the different products that you enabled, uh, by default, they go in the temp directory, which would be C Windows temp, since our service is running under system context. That could be problematic uh, with regards to a few different scenarios like disk space on the C drive, as well as exclusions. Uh, not all companies would feel comfortable excluding C Windows temp for, for those operations for antivirus. You can now configure a custom folder uh, for both the temporary content download, and you can also now set a custom folder for the patchmypc.log if you wanna save it somewhere other than the installation directory. Another new feature that we have is you can generate a CSV file for any published updates. So by default, that goes in the installation directory. So I believe it's patchmypc-publishing history, and that would just uh, save you a CSV file for all the updates that have been published to your environment. So we added that feature and we also added the ability to save it to a custom folder as well in case you don't wanna keep it in the installation directory. Another new option is we built in a cleanup wizard that will show any unreferenced updates uh, for temporary publishing of WSUS content where you can clean up and potentially save quite a bit of space that would not be uh, included in the typical WSUS cleanup wizards. Um, so this can be quite helpful if You've been using our product for a while and you may have some update content left over for kind of temporary uh, publishing locations for binaries. So this could potentially save quite a bit of space. A few things on the back end, we do now write to the Windows event log. 
So we had a few customers that wanted to do some advanced options where they could trigger different automation actions based on different event IDs. Um, so we do now uh, log out to the uh, Windows event log. A few other things behind the hood, you can now set custom timeouts for downloads. Um, you can now trigger a synchronization via command line in case you wanted to automate uh, running a sync from like a PowerShell script or something like that. Uh, and then there are just a variety of other improvements on the back end. Now, as far as products go, we did add quite a few new products. Let me see if I can pull that up really quick. Um, so we added about 12 different products uh, within the service within the last two months as well, as well as including some uh, different language support for German and EN-GB for Firefox updates as well. Uh, I hope this video was helpful. If you have any feedback of new features you would like to see, please feel free to submit that at ideas.patchmypc.com. Thank you for watching.